Hey guys, today I'm out here fishing for Yankee bass, northern largemouth. I'd say of all of the baits, especially around the north part of the country, that get overlooked, this is probably it right here. This is my favorite one. Terminator, super stainless. This is a really good one when you're trying to imitate bait fish. Just a simple silver, it's got a black back, and you can see that little bit of red on the throat. Two silver blades. I like the willows most of the time, but today I'm just gonna target fish with a spinner bait. Good old fashioned way I cut my teeth fishing a long, long, long time ago. My favorite way to catch them. And uh, I'm gonna see what we can catch down through here. I think when the chatter bait took off, that was the kiss of death for the spinner bait. You know, not a lot of guys throw it anymore. It's got some definite advantages when you're fishing around shallow stumps and wood like I'm doing today, where I can crawl right over those big stumps and not get snagged. Basically what I'm doing, I'm just fluffing that spinner bait around stumps. And it's just a fun way to fish. You know, this is a real light spinner bait. It's only a quarter ounce. That blade will spin at the slowest of speed. I mean, look, you can see how slow I'm reeling this. This is eight to, eight to one reel, but still, that blade is always spinning. And you will get the occasional snag, but for the most part, I mean, compared to a chatterbait or a, or a crankbait, um, you're able to come through that. And, and what I like the best about it is I can let it fall. Um, down in these little holes, you know, you got some of these big stumps have holes in them. And I can flutter that thing right down in behind these little uh, roots that come off of these big stumps. And as long as I'm careful and I don't get myself in a hurry, I can feather it through all that stuff. And a lot of the bites I get, believe it or not, are uh, they're slack line bites, like feel like a like a jig bite. So there's one right there. Mm, that's so fun. But you see, I was just letting that thing flutter down in those roots, and he came out and got it. I mean, that's <laughs> there's just not a lot. A lot of better ways to catch them. Um, felt like a jig bite, like I was saying when he bit it, just letting it fall over those limbs, working it real, real slow. And that's a fish that could I have caught it on a Texas rig or a jig? Maybe. Could I have caught it on chatterbait? No. Could I have caught it on a crankbait? No. So if you want to fish a reaction type of bait, this is one of the only ways you can do it and he slack lined it. So I'm just barely pulling it, letting it flutter. Sometimes you can't really see. This water's a little clear where I'm at right now. You know, these stumps look like giant spiders in the water. I can see the little channels between the roots. I can see the little holes, but it's kind of cool to get a, a slack line bite on a spinner bait. And it's a fairly good hookup percentage too. I mean, just as good as a jig. As long as you don't get careless and start fishing too fast, that arm on the spinner bait actually acts like a, uh, a weed guard. But I'm throwing it all through there. I mean, you do not have to be shy. If you get it into a, a V or something, and there's nothing you can do about that sometimes, but as far as throwing it behind these stumps and having confidence that I'm going to get it back. And you can see where I just threw that. This lake can be muddy or clear, you just never know. But it's not rocket science. I mean, your uh, chartreuses and gold blades tend to work better as it gets muddier. It's just a fun, fun way to fish. Don't think they won't bite it yo-yoing it. I mean, I was literally behind a big arm on that stump, yo-yoing it up and down when that last one bit it. You can uh, use a bigger spinner bait and get away with it, but I, I really like to try to use the smallest possible one. Not really making long casts, you're kind of more in pitching and flipping kind of mode.
Little guy. That was awesome, Mike. I flipped it in there. Trying to fluff that skirt. I mean, there's just no way to get a chatterbait through that. There's little ways you can, little tricks to rigging those things weedless, and they do make some with brush guards, but even those get snagged a lot worse than the spinnerbait will. Don't really have to get too caught up in the line size and all that stuff. I, I vary mine a lot, just depending on a lot of different things. Size of the fish I'm fishing for, you know, they might be, this might be Texas and I'm around 10 pounders or whatever, you know? So I might use 20 pound test. I, I, I never go over 20. I always use fluorocarbon. Right now I'm using 14, which is just a good all around size. You do have the potential to catch, you know, your biggest bass of the year when you're fishing this way. I don't know what it is, but big fish will bite this spinnerbait. Super slow. I really don't think you can fish too slow. Bounce those blades off everything. Let it sink down in there. A lot of times on a jig, you'll get those mushy bites, you know, where you kind of not sure for a second whether it's a fish or not. Doesn't usually happen with the spinnerbait. You're fishing it the exact same way, but it seems like for the most part, your bites are pretty hard. Bites are pretty violent. My equipment, uh, pretty standard, I'm using a 7.3, medium heavy. It's an NV rod from 13 Fishing. I'm using an eight to one reel. I want that high speed all the time for just about everything. Fluorocarbon, Suffix Advanced. It's uh, real good. We have a lot of zebra mussels and stuff that gets on these stumps in most of our lakes. And um, you just want something that's real abrasion resistance because it is full contact. I mean, I'm basically pretending it's a jig and fishing it real slow. That line's constantly rubbing up against a lot of stuff that could uh, cause you problems if you don't have a really good line. So this is just another technique you can try. You know, something that'll get you some bites behind other fishermen, something that'll get you some bites behind yourself. Catch that monster. Fluffing the spinnerbait, bud. Fluffing it. Fluffing it. Loving fluffing it. My rule of thumb is if I look at it and the last thing I think is to throw a spinnerbait in there, that's when I'm going to throw the spinnerbait in there because I know that's what everyone else is thinking too. Really good technique, fun way to fish, and a good way to catch gigantic bass. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. Is that a bass? Dude, it is a bass. Look at this. Look at that sucker. Oh my gosh. He hit it on a slack, literally a slack line. I'm in less than a foot of water. Come here, buddy. He was on that stump right there. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And that's the reason. That's why I'm throwing the spinner bait. I could throw a lot of different stuff around this wood like this, but I might not have caught that. That's a fish of a lifetime up here. Dude, this is, this is a seven pound Yankee bass. That's a Terminator. All right, there we go.